Look, I'm losing you. I'll call you back from the ball to four. Fortunately, the sum of all fears is fiction, but graphically illustrates in that clip what be could become a horrifying reality. Pat and I and our very talented colleagues at Decision Sciences International spend the better part of our days worrying about such instances and scenarios. The company's mission, quite simply, is to assist in preventing nuclear proliferation and terrorism and its horrific impacts. How did this terrifying arc of history begin, and where are we today? As many of you may know, Albert Einstein signed a very famous, now famous letter to Franklin Delano Roosevelt in August of 1939. In it, he warns about Nazi confiscation of uranium mines in Czechoslovakia and advanced scientific research. He worries about the element uranium being turned into sources of energy which could lead to new and powerful bombs. Prophetically, he worries that a single bomb of this type carried by a boat and exploded in a port might very well destroy the whole port together with some of the surrounding territory. The letter was incredibly prescient, led to the creation of the Manhattan Project, the creation of the Los Alamos National Laboratory, atomic weapons, and in our view, initiated the nuclear arc of history in which we believe we've come full circle. Nuclear weapons led to proliferation and now nuclear terrorism concerns. A potential solution, however, was invented by the very same Los Alamos National Lab and then developed by private industry. Let's talk about the arc for a moment. A vision of the apocalypse from 1950, a future skyline of New York City being potentially devastated by a nuclear blast, Collier's Magazine. JFK, 1961, at the United Nations. Every man, woman, and child lives under a nuclear sword of Damocles, hanging by the slenderest of threads, capable of being cut at any moment by accident or miscalculation or by madness. The weapons of war must be abolished before they abolish us. Madness, of course, he's referring to terrorism. 2001, imagine if it were a nuclear event. The biggest threat facing this country is uh, weapons of mass destruction in the hands of a terrorist network. A potential game changer would be a nuclear weapon in the hands of terrorists blowing up in a major American city. And so when I go down the list of things I have to worry about all the time. That is at the top because that's one area where you can't afford any mistakes. We approach this problem from the perspective that the threat is incredibly real and incredibly worrisome. It's a bipartisan and grave concern. With that, let me turn it over to my colleague, Pat DeMauro, who some of you may know spent 26 years with the FBI was the inspector in charge of the 9-11 investigation globally for the FBI, and subsequently oversaw counterterrorism and counterintelligence for the Bureau. He spent most of his career fighting this troubling 
issue, dealing with this troubling issue, and led us to get involved in this public-private partnership. Pat? Thank you, Stuart. As we've all heard and seen, the threat is real. Intelligence services to date have collected extensive amounts of information indicating that the threat of nuclear terrorism is a real possibility. If you look at this slide, the last line, Dr. Majidi, my colleague, a former colleague at the FBI who came from Los Alamos, tells us that the probability of a WMD event is 100 percent. As you can see from this slide, the potential impact of an attack on a major American city, the loss of lives, physical and emotional damage, is enormous. It's almost too great to fathom and would be unbearable for the survivors and the country, and indeed the world. There is also a huge potential economic impact. This is perhaps more readily quantifiable. Consider the impact of a relatively modest attack on a single port. As a RAND and CRS study indicated, even a relatively modest attack on a single port could cause a trillion dollar event. Port security is a huge vulnerability. Let me give you one simple example. I was sitting at headquarters one day when I received a call from the Newark office identifying that an Italian flagship named the Palumbo Senator was in Port Elizabeth and it was giving off a gamma reading. And they were asking me if I wanted them to search the ship in port or take it back out to sea. My comment was that once the ship is in port, it's a little late to worry about searching it and where you're going to search it. I asked them to find out as soon as they could what the material was. Well, technology at that particular time was such that it wasn't until they got the device right next to the container that was emitting the gamma readings, and they opened the container and found out it was clay pots. This situation has occurred again and again since the Palumbo Senator. It's critical, therefore, that all cargo be scanned prior to loading it onto a ship for transit. Threats today can be shielded to mask the radiation signature. Shielding generally defeats the currently technology that's deployed in our ports. Cargo is a major vulnerability, hence the U.S. government's requirement in H.R. 1 for 100 percent cargo scanning to be fully implemented by 2012. Secretary Napolitano earlier this year requested a two-year extension of the law because of the need for new technology. Just this week, Department of Homeland Security entered into a contract with Decision Sciences to fully evaluate its solution, the Multimode Passive Detection System, or as we refer to it, the MMPDS. Through public and private partnerships, the, this revolutionary and transforming solution emerged. The MMPDS and Decision Sciences more generally are prototypes for future success. This solution is an outgrowth of research and development conducted at LANL, but privately funded and fully developed for commercial deployment by Decision Sciences. Here's how it works. Cosmic rays, which have been entering our atmosphere since the beginning of time, create muons, which travel at speeds nearing the speed of light and can penetrate extremely dense objects, including steel and lead enclosures that are typically used to hide radioactive material. The muons are slightly deflected. So we measure muons using sensitive position sensitive detectors. We can measure positions of the muons when they go through these detectors. By using two detectors, you can measure the trajectory of a muon so you know where it's going. So we can measure the trajectory going into a volume, going into an interaction volume, and we can measure the angle going out. By measuring that angle change, we know how much material the muon has gone through. As you can see from this slide, MMPDS is a multi-mode system with two primary modes for radiological or nuclear detection, muon tomography and a highly sensitive gamma detection. Muons are able to pass through shielding and are slightly defected by heavy Z or nuclear material. The system measure the, measures the angle of deflection and density using very advanced algorithms. MMPDS does not impact the flow of commerce. 
The system is highly sensitive and can detect very small amounts of shielded or unshielded nuclear material. Stuart, if you come back up. Thanks, Pat. If you focus your attention on the upper left portion of this slide, you'll see the system in action. On August 10, 2012, just a short while ago, Decision Sciences launched a fully installed MMPDS unit in the Freeport Container Port in the Bahamas. Here, a cargo truck enters the MMPDS like it would typically enter or exit any port facility. The driver can actually stay in the vehicle, and people can walk around and even on the scanner itself as the system performs. There is no radiation or other harm to people or cargo. The operator of the MMPDS views a monitor that will report if radiological threat is present and shows where it is located inside the container with a three-dimensional image. This, this is, of course, is the demonstration, so a monitor in a port facility would be much smaller. The system will indicate whether an object is heavily shielded and will be able to penetrate the shielding to see the threat object inside. In approximately 30 seconds, the screen signals a green for no threat. The truck is cleared to exit. Fast, reliable, and the flow of commerce is not impeded. Unlike other technologies, MMPDS uses no radiation as it is completely safe, merely harnessing and measuring naturally occurring cosmic ray muons to detect a nuclear or radiological material or threat. Once a truck leaves, another can immediately or quickly drive right in and begin another scan. Perhaps equally as exciting, an additional software upgrade, no hardware change, will be put into the system in the coming months. It will allow the same technology to also detect conventional explosives and other contraband as well. The system, as you can see, is up and running in Freeport at one of the busiest container ports in the world in another private partnership, if you will, with Hutchinson Port Holdings. So in summary, the MMPDS is an efficient, safe, and reliable system identifies and locates 3D in a 3D image unshielded or heavily shielded threats, nuclear or radiological. It's automated, takes less than 30 seconds, can scan an entire tractor trailer and a 40-foot shipping container in that amount of time with a driver never leaving the cab of the vehicle. And it's safe. No ionizing radiation for people, produce, or anything else. In conclusion, the nuclear arc of history, in our view, began with Einstein's letter to Franklin Roosevelt in 1939, in which he recognized the very real and potentially catastrophic consequences of nuclear proliferation and terrorism. Presidents and national security advisors ever since, and experts, have worried that proliferation and terrorism are among the greatest threats of our time. Ports, border crossings, critical infrastructure are all incredibly vulnerable to this threat. Revolutionary technology has been sorely needed. Secretary Napolitano has stated the same. A transformative public-private partnership between Los Alamos National Lab, Decision Sciences providing the funding, now the Department of Homeland Security and other agencies have now provided such a solution, a practical, safe, deployable, and cost-effective one. Decision Sciences in particular has been proud to be a part of this partnership to work with these agencies and government officials. Thank you.